This morning, I, I want to um, share with you um, something that's in my heart. Uh, we, I'm so grateful to the all our, all our young speakers. Uh, uh, we've had a theme going on uh, this this year uh, concerning right thinking. And so, uh, the Bible clearly teaches us if we want to do better, then we have to think a little better, and that means we have to think a little differently. Uh, really just think how, how God thinks and would have us to think. So with that in mind, uh, as we keep this thing and follow the, uh, the life of Elijah, uh, turn with me to 2 Kings um, chapter 6. 2 Kings chapter 6. And we're going to begin in at verse number, uh, verse number 1. And I'm going to promise not to Told you a long time, but a couple of things I want to share, and um, I hope uh, hope they'll be a blessing, blessing to you. Second uh, Kings chapter six, uh, beginning at uh, verse one. And while you're turning, please continue to pray for all of those in the church family that are uh, suffering from the loss of loved ones. So please continue to do that. Second uh, Kings chapter six, verse one states. Um, and the sons of the prophets said to Elisha, See now, the place where we dwell with you is too small for us. Please let us go to the Jordan, and let every man take a beam from there, and let us make a place where we may dwell. And he answered, Go. Then one said, Please consent to go with your servants. And he answered, I will go. So he went with them, and when they came to the Jordan, they cut down trees. But as one was cutting down a tree, the iron axe head fell into the water. And he cried out and said, Alas, master, for it was borrowed. So the man of God said, Where did it fall? And he showed him the place, so he cut off a stick and threw it in there, and he made the iron flow. Therefore he said, Pick it up for yourself. So he reached out his hand, and he took it. And uh, I want to, uh, I, I want to, uh, I guess, speak from a, uh, about the Lord of the increase. The Lord of the increase. Uh, this is as we uh, chronicle the life of uh, Elisha, and and like I said, uh, we, we all have been following that uh, his life and that theme. Uh, we find uh, we find them coming to a new place in in their ministry. And, uh, as we have heard the last few weeks, uh, that Elisha uh, continued on the uh, tradition of his predecessor Elijah. Uh, and being a part of and being the leader of, uh, of the first seminary uh, that was ever installed. Uh, we think the things that we do now are something new, but um, uh, Bible colleges and Bible seminaries was originated back in the uh, book of Second Kings. And so, um, so Elijah would have been the first president of a seminary. Elijah would have been his uh, successor. So, so he so there were uh, three schools, as a matter of fact. Uh, that was one located in Bethel. Uh, that was another one located in Jericho. And the one that's, um, that's being uh, highlighted uh, in the passage uh, is the one that was located in Gilgal. Gilgal is, a, is a, just a wonderful place. You, you ever want to do a rich study of scripture, um, just go take a look at all the stuff that happened at Gilgal. Um, and anytime Gilgal is used, it, it, it has uh, it has several, several different uh, meaning uh, uh, context. So uh, they were at Gilgal and, and, and they realized that things needed to change. So now, at Gilgal, if you would recall, um, that was the first place uh, that the Israelites uh, arrived when they came across the Jordan and God had, uh, was, was about to bring them into the promised land. 
Gilgal was the place where they exercised the first Passover uh, as they crossed over into their new land. It was a place of renewal. It was a place of renewal or dedication because it was a place where they reinstated the, the ritual of circumcision, uh, setting themselves aside to be God's people. Uh, it was a place where when they came across the Jordan, they erected uh, 12 memorial stones um, in, in remembrance of what God had done before they started off on their, their new journey. So, so Gilgal was a starting off place. It was a starting off place. But not only was it a starting off of place, place, it was a place of rededication. And, and if you look at other places in scripture, every time they kind of got off a little bit, they would come back to Gilgal and recalibrate. Yeah. And so, 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 so here we find though, that as they had studied and they had grown in Gilgal, uh, it came a time for them to move on. You know, it's, it's one thing to get saved, and that's a good thing. Amen. Amen. It's another thing to come back and rededicate your life to the Lord. That's another good thing. Amen. But at some point, you got to move on from there. Amen? Amen. At some point, you got to move away from where you started. Amen. And so when you look at the passage, you realize that the seminary had grown, and, and it says that they had outgrown the place from which they were resided. And so they came to the prophet and said, Elijah, it's time for us to go and build a new place. Amen. Yeah. See, 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 if we stay with the Lord long enough, if we will allow him to, 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 to do his work uh, in us, we should grow. Amen. Amen. We shouldn't be the same uh, person that we were two years ago. We shouldn't be the same person that we were 10 years ago. If we are truly men and women of God, then we ought to be growing. Uh, the Bible tells us, he says in 2 Corinthians 10, 13, having hope when your faith is increased that you shall be enlarged. And so as our faith is increased in God, then we ought to be enlarged in him. Which means that we ought to be doing greater things now for the, for the Lord than we did a long time ago. Amen? Enlarge means, I know now, now, you, I, I know this is a, it's a hard word to wrap your, wrap, wrap your head around, but, but, but enlarge means to do bigger things. Amen? Amen. Yeah, Amen. You like that technical definition? <laughs> <laughs> it means to do bigger things for the Lord. So I want to ask you a question. Uh, are you at the same place you were in your Christian walk as you were this time last year? Yeah. You know, this is anniversary when we uh, when, when, when COVID kicked off. We have been uh, officially outside one year today. And so I know things have changed around us, but have you grown in the Lord this past year? <laughs> and see, in order for us to grow, in order for us to grow, in order for us to increase in the Lord, that must be this one thing that must take place before it happens. We have to stop being satisfied where we are. If we remain satisfied, then we'll never go out and do the stuff that God will. We'll never increase in the Lord. We'll just be fine and content right where we are. But if you look in the scriptures, we, you realize that they became discontent where they were. You know, some of us are discontent right now. Mm -hmm. Some of us are not satisfied where we are in the Lord. Uh -huh. And it just might be that God is trying to tell us something. Amen. God may have put this spirit of, uh, of discontent in your heart. He may, he, he, he may have had you all wrapped up and, and not knowing what we need to do right now because he wants us to grow. But in order to grow, but in order to grow, 
And don't miss this. You got to let go. You got to let go. Now, Elisha had poured his life in, 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 into these sons. These were, these were preachers. And he had poured his whole life into them. And, and this was not just some vocational uh, relationship he had with them. The Bible clearly refers to them, to them as the sons of the prophets. That means that he loved them just like he loved his own biological children. And, 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 and let me tell you something. If the only person on this earth that you love is your own, then you're missing out on the best part of life. Amen? He loved them just like they were his own. He would lay his life down for them because he loved them just, just that much. But no matter how much you love somebody, no matter how much we love our children, at some point you got to do what? You got to let them go. Amen. Amen. In order for us to grow in the Lord, there come a time when we got to let go. Some of us are all wrapped up now. Now I'm talking, I'm talking to the, the mamas and the grandmamas that have adult children. Some of us are all wrapped up now. We can't enjoy, we can't enlarge in our walk with the Lord because we won't let them go. We gotta let them go. We gotta let them go. Why? Because they need to grow. Amen. And you and I need to grow. Amen. Because you can't grow until you do what? Let you got to let go. You got to let go. You got to let go. We got to let go some stuff. We got to let go some folks. And it doesn't mean that we throwing them away. It just means that times have changed. And when times change, we have to change. I know it's hard. I know it's hard. I got them sitting all around me right now. My biological and my unbiological. It doesn't make any difference with me. It's hard to let go. But they need to grow. But now, you know I'm preaching this thing to myself, right? <laughs> I'm preaching to myself. <laughs> but you know what happened? What did the prophet say when they asked him about going another place and, and, and making a larger place? He told them to do what? Go! Go on! He could have felt, he could have felt, I, I, I hate this term because it really doesn't say much, but, but it keep, communicates to other folks. He could have felt some kind of way, whatever that kind of way was. I hate that term, but you know, a lot of people use it. He felt some kind of way, about, uh, may have felt some kind of way about that, but he told them to go. But here's the wonderful, here's the wonderful part when you let go. Guess what he said next? And one of them said to them, won't you please come with your servants? And what did he say? I'll go. Amen. But in order for this thing to work right, y'all don't hear me, in order for this thing to work out so that everybody go, you got to let go. And then when you let go, oh, you don't hear me, then you got to wait for them to invite you back in.
thought I was preaching to myself. Whew. But now if you gonna change, if you gonna enlarge, there's always a struggle. Change does not come without a struggle. And so the Bible tells us that they went on down to the Jordan. It says that when they went to the Jordan and began to cut down trees, in verse 4, and as one of them was cutting down a tree, the axe head fell in the water. And he said, Oh Lord, he cried out, it was bar. See, they didn't throw away the old man, did they? They didn't dislike the old man. Why? Because they still need the old man. And when the right circumstance came up, they said, hey, Dad. Woo! Hey, Dad. Yeah. I need you. Yeah, need. He said, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I said I wouldn't know how. I'm sorry. And he'll say, okay, okay, if you just call out. See, the first thing, when you start in the struggle, when you start to change, when you start to grow, there's a struggle. And in order to increase, you got to cut down some trees. You got to cut down some trees. See, when you want to change, you got to do some foundational struggles before the increase will come. You see, they couldn't build a new building for them to be in unless they cut down the trees first. And here's the thing about cutting down trees. You go through all that work, cut down the trees and skin them and, 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 and split them and everything you need to build, but you still haven't built anything yet. You go through all that work, but it's just foundational work. And so they were cutting down the trees. And the Bible says that the axe came off the hammer and it fell into the water. Now to us, that doesn't seem like a lot because we live in a different time when you know, we can run down to, to, to new homes or, or a hardware store and get an axe home, get an axe for, for nothing. But back then, iron was extremely rare and it was extremely expensive. And the reason he had to borrow one in the first place because they were so valuable and they cost so much. See, let me see if I put this in, in, in the context of what, what, what it would seem like to us. It would be the equivalent of us having a, a, a backhoe that we were using to construct the area. And the backhoe flipped over in the water. Mm -hmm. And all of them thousands of dollars worth of equipment was in the water. And there was nothing we could do about it. That's what it was like to have an axe head in the water. And so he panicked. He panicked and said, Oh man of God, what are we going to do? Because it was borrowed. Everybody still with me? It was borrowed. Now, I can't, I, I can't skip this because this is one of the most important things. Turn with me real quick to Exodus chapter 22, verse 14. Just, just flip over there real quick. And I want to lay the groundwork and then we'll come back to, to, to 2 Kings. It says, Exodus chapter 22, verse number 14. It says, And if a man borrows anything from his neighbor mm -hmm. and it becomes injured or dies, the owner of it not being with it, he shall surely make it good. Did you see that? 
Now, this is one of these laws we don't really, you know, nobody look at a lot. But he says that if you borrow something uh, from somebody and something happened to it, you are responsible for it. And I want you to know this, this law hadn't changed. God still feel that way about it. When we borrow somebody's stuff, we are still responsible for it. Amen? Amen. And so, before he could move forward, before they could move forward, they had to make it good with the borrowed item. Translated, you can't do the, a good thing trying to do it the wrong way. Amen? You can't, you can't enlarge in God. You can't go greater in God having good intentions doing it the wrong way. Amen. And so these were preachers. These were preachers. See, as preachers, we can't get up there and tell uh, y'all the right thing to do unless we're willing to do it ourselves. Amen, lights. And so for, before he could move forward in the building process. He had to go back and make things right. See, one of the things that keep us from growing in the Lord, we got too many axe heads in the water. There's too many things that's out there that, y'all follow me now, there are too many things out there that we need to go back and take care of first. And the reason we can't move forward because we refuse to go back and to take care of them all right here. Amen. But God says, until you go and take care of some of that stuff, you are not going to move forward. God is not going to allow you and I to move forward. It was barred. It was barred. Now I'm going to hurt your feelings a little bit. that all right? You know, he either had to replace that axe head, find it, or pay for it. Now, I'm going to hurt your feelings a little bit, but y'all do still love me, right? Some of us, we got too many axe heads showing up in the, in the mailbox. Amen. Ooh, I know I'm mailing now. Amen. Ooh, some of us still got axe heads coming from seals. They don't wear our business. Amen. Too many axe heads. Too many stuff. Too many things coming. And we want God. Amen. We want God to bless us financially. We want God to enlarge us. But we still got too many axe heads in the water, amen? Too many axe heads. I got to tell you this. I've been trying to figure out all night how I'm going to tell you this. All night. Matter of fact, I've been trying to figure this out for several days. Brother Cole, Brother Cole, you were with me when I had to say something hard. Wait, 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 hey, that's my buddy there. He always with me. But I know if everything fails, he gonna he gonna buy me some lunch. Amen. <laughs> what, Brother Hunter? He here? Hunter, see he here? He not here. Okay. You know it's hard. It's hard for me to tell y'all this, but I gotta tell you the truth. Man, I'll, I'll be I'll be almost through. See some of us. Trying to move forward in the Lord. Trying to move to greater heights. And we trying to grow in the Lord and smoke ooh wee at the same time. Uh-uh. You ain't no way in the Bible. You can tell me that I can be a Christian and smoke doing the wrong thing and expect God to bless me. 
All right, I'm going to stop milling. Amen. Go ahead. Don't stop. Everybody still here? Look at what Proverbs 28 and 13 say. You don't have to turn there. It says, whoever conceals his transgressions mm. will not prosper. Mm -hmm. That means the axe head still in the water, right? But he who confesses and forsakes them will obtain mercy. If we would just be willing, amen, amen, if we would just be willing to deal with some of those things, what's the payoff? God is not trying to take something away from us. God is not trying to stop us from having fun. God is not trying to suck the life out of us. God is trying to give us life and to give it more abundantly. Amen. But we got to let go of some stuff. Amen. And give it over to God. Verse 6. In order to grow, in order to get that axe head out of the water, then we got to go back to where we got off track. You got to go back to where we got off track. When he went before the man of God, the first thing Elijah asked him was, where was the axe head? Where did it go in the water? And he said, he said, man of God, it went in the water over there. You got to go back in your life if you've gotten off track. And I don't know what's going on in your life, but if you have gotten off track, you got to go back to the place where you got off track, confess it before the Lord, and say, Lord, this is where I got out, and God will raise that axe head back up from top of the water. But you got to go back. I have to go back. I have to examine myself. I have to examine my life and see where. I got off track. Thank you, Richard. And he said he pointed out the place. And when he pointed out the place, the man of God threw a stick in the place where the axe head was. And he says when he threw the stick in the place where the axe head was, the borrowed Iron came to the top. It came to the top. Amen. Amen. God want us, God want every one of us to rise to the top. Amen. God does not want us to stay on the Lord. He does not want us to be hidden away. He does not want us to be uh, shameful. He doesn't want all that stuff of us. He wants us to rise from the rise to the top and all we have to do is just to give it over to God and say God this is where I got off track this is the place if you'll go back and help me deal with it most of the time all we need to do is just confess our sins to him amen all we have to do most of the time is just ask God to forgive us all we have to do most of the time is just to repent for whatever it, it was. Everybody's gotten off track. If, if, if somebody here that's never gotten off track before, blow your horn. See, I thought that. Amen. All of us have been off track. I've been off track. And if you say you've never been off track, you're lying to yourself. We all get off track. But we can't push it aside and act like it didn't happen. We got to go back to the very place where we got off track and say, Lord, raise me back up to the top. Increase me again, Lord. Bless me, dear Lord. Give me those things that I, back that I lost when I was off track. Lord, bless me all over again. You know what? He'll do it. He'll do it. He didn't have to buy another axe head. God put the one that he had back in his head. God 
loves us. He loves us. He loves us so much. And he knows, he knows how tough this world is. And I'm not getting on anybody's case about anything that, 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 that you've done or I've done, because if you do some of the stuff I've done, you pull out his parking lot right now and never would come back again. But the only difference is, one day I gave it to the Lord. That's it. That's it. And I'm going to tell you a little secret. Uh, I'm going to tell you a little secret. Every now and then, some of that stuff will crop up again. Amen. I know you don't have that problem, right? You all just stay away forever. But every now and then, mine will crop up again. And when it crop up again, I go right back to that place where it happened. I said, Lord, I'm sorry. Help me to rise back up again. And he has, let me tell you something. He has never said no. Never. 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 Oh, wretched man that I am, as Paul said, and I, and I feel just like it. Oh, wretched man that I am. Thank God for our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Thank God for him. I'm through with it. You don't have that, that, that intimate relationship with him. If you don't have a relationship with him, like Elijah had with the sons of the prophets. I'm telling you, I'd rather have the Lord than a pocket full of money. Man, it's just so much money can do. Amen. But God gives us that peace. Amen. That peace that passes all understanding. Amen. You know, I, I, I'm going to say this because you know, every time I preach, I, I, I say stuff because, you know, Reggie put me on the chair a few weeks ago. Amen. So I don't know how much, I don't know how long I'm going to be before the chair come and get me. But I'm going to tell you this, and I mean this from all my heart. Man, I'm a happy man. Man, I'm just so happy. Sometimes I have to pinch myself. And, and do I have problems? Yeah. Do stuff happen in my life? Yes. Are folks mad at me? Yes. Yeah. Amen. Do, 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 uh, do I have some ex heads coming in the mailbox? Yes. Yeah. But all in all, God has made me a happy man. I am happy. And, I, and it's all because of my Lord and Savior. Uh, I, want, I, I, I ask you to try. If you don't know it, will you try? Will you try? But give us some good news. Amen.